great thing you will do in Jesus' name. I pray, O oh Lord, you will take us to the winning side, that every one of us will be a winner in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. I'm reading from Psalm 101, Psalm 107, from verse 1. Who give thanks unto the Lord for his good, for his mercy endure forever. Let the redeem of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy, and gather them out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. They wander in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in, hungry and thirsty. They are so fainted in them. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. In verse 20, he sent his word and his and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. For these few days we have been gathered together in this place. These promises of God, this experience of the people of God have been literally fulfilled in our life. We want to lift up our hearts, we want to lift up our hands, we want to give thanks unto the Lord. For this God is good, His mercies endure forever. Let's open our mouth this morning as we begin to worship the name of the Lord and praise Him and worship and adore Him for the wonderful thing God has done in our midst during this Easter retreat, the Resurrection Power Retreat. The Lord has been so mighty. He has demonstrated his power and his mercy and his goodness to everyone. Why don't you lift up your heart this morning and say, God, I thank you. I appreciate you for what you have done, for the redemption, for the deliverance. Many people were coming here. They were hungry and they were thirsty for righteousness. And the Lord God has satisfied the longings of every soul. We want to approach God this morning. We want to tell him we appreciate him. Open your mouth. Worship the Lord. Adore him, reference him, thank him for all the wonders, for the goodness and the mercy of God we have enjoyed wonderfully in this place. The Lord has touched everyone, the Lord has ministered to you, the Lord has healed you, and there are wonderful promises God has given unto us on this. Lord, I appreciate you. I give you all the glory. Open your mouth and pray. This is the time to ask, to praise the name of the Lord for all the good things you have done. The Lord has been so good in our midst during these few days we are here. Right from the first message, the Lord ministered to us and the Lord has been so kind. The Lord has opened our eyes to see wonderful things reserved in his word for every one of us. Open your mouth and praise God and worship him and adore him. He is God and there is no other God beside him. Let's open our mouth this morning. Let's thank him because God is good. God is wonderful. God is great. And the psalmist, because God is good, he says, we should enter into his presence with singing. He says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Enter into his gate with thanksgiving and into his cause with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. During this retreat, the goodness of God has been so real in our midst. During this retreat, the Lord has touched our lives. During this retreat, the Lord has imparted so many things to our lives. And because of that, this morning, there is need for everybody here today to praise God, to adore Him, to worship Him, and to tell God, we are grateful unto you. You have been so kind. You have been so merciful. You have been so good to everyone. In the children church, in the youth session, in the campus session, in the adult session here, the Lord has moved wonderfully, and we can see that the Lord has been so kind to everyone. Let's open our mouth this morning. Let's adore him. Let's worship the name of the Lord. Let's give him all the glory. And this is the last 
time, the last message in this retreat that will be listened to very, very shortly. We want to tell him, Lord, we appreciate all that God has taken us through during this retreat. Open your mouth and pray. It is the time to adore the name of the Lord. It is the time to, to praise his holy name for the wonderful thing he has done in our lives. Let's give him all the glory. Let's give him all the honor. Let's thank God for all we have listened to at this retreat right from the first message. The Lord has been so wonderful. The Lord has taken us through all the messages. The wonders of the resurrection power we have seen. We saw what God did, how God ministered to us as individuals and as a corporate church. Let's open our mouth and bless the name of the Lord. Don't everybody here Nobody is spared from the blessing of the Lord. And because of that, let's come before him this morning and say, Lord, we appreciate you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. In Jesus' name, we pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. During this retreat, the Lord has used our Father in the Lord and other ministers. We have been blessed wonderfully. And God has been our means in a unique way. And the psalmist says in Psalm 48, in verse 14, he says, for this God is our God forever and ever. And he will be our, our guide even unto death. This morning we are going to open our heart unto the Lord because of the goodness, because of his mercy, because of the demonstration of his power in our means. We are going to say like the psalmist, that this God is our God for dawn at this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Every session, our Father in the Lord comes up. There has always been a unique period. We want to thank God for the word of life the Lord has given unto us through our pastor and our Father in the Lord. The Lord has given every message you want to see how it is wonderful. We want to praise the name of the Lord. That God has not hidden his word from us in this church. Let's open our mouth and praise God for the unique way God has ministered to us at this year Easter retreat. Every message comes with freshness. Every, every, every message comes with revelation. Every message touches our life. We want to praise the Lord. We want to give God the glory for the way God has used our Father to minister unto us. God has given him the word and he has given it to us liberally. Let's open our mouth and praise the name of the Lord and give him all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. As we come to this last lap of the message and the retreat uh, program, we want to pray that the Lord God Almighty will bless you. There is something special God has in store for everyone that as we go, the key to succeed, the key to make progress, the key to live victorious life and to win every moment by moment, the Lord will give unto every one of us in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and pray unto the Lord this morning as we come for this last message, the key that, un that, that unlocks heaven, the key of possibility, the key that possesses possession, the Lord will give unto every one of us as we come together, and as we live here this morning, nobody will be a victim. Everyone will be victorious over sin, over self, over Satan, over circumstances of life. And as we leave this place this day, God will begin to do wonderful things in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Today will be great. So this morning will be powerful. And the power of resurrection will touch every one of us in Jesus' name. Our Father in heaven, we are grateful unto you for the moment of prayer. Thank you, Lord, because of the privilege of asking from you and we receive from you because you are our Father. And as we come before you this morning, we reflect all the wonderful things you have done since we started this wonderful retreat, resurrection power. We pray that all that you have deposited in us 
Satan and the world will not take them away in Jesus' name. And as we come this morning, Lord, we pray, heavens shall be open. And Lord, we ask you the key that locks every locked door, that opens every locked door, you will give unto every one of us in Jesus' name. And as we leave from this place, every one of us will be a winner. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. We remain standing as we be singing together from the program sheet in our hands. Page 3. Will you be free from the body of sin? There is power in the blood. Power in the blood. Will you over a victory win? There is wonderful power in the blood. Will you be free from your passion and pride? There is power in the blood. Power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to cover the tide. There is wonderful power in the blood. Will you be whiter, much whiter than snow? There is power in the blood. Power in the blood. Sin stain a loss in its life-giving flow. There is wonderful power in the blood. Will you, be, will you do service for Jesus your King? There is power in the blood. Power in the blood. Will you live daily his praises to sing? There is wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb.
Good morning, everybody. How are you today? Well, thank God because we are here again this morning. We are believing God that as we conclude this retreat today, you will go home with the bundles of joy in Jesus' name. We are in for the searching the scriptures. Would you mind rise up so that we can pray together? Father, we just thank you. We we'll bless you. We we'll worship you. We we'll thank you because of the glorious day, marvelous day, wonderful day. The day you have made and we we'll rejoice in it. We we'll thank you for everything you have done for us. From the beginning of the retreat to this time, we well, thank you for as many that have been saved, sanctified, baptized in the Holy Spirit, and even healing, deliverance, spectacular miracles. We ascribe all glory, all honor, all majesty unto you in Jesus' name. We are here this morning to listen to your word again. We we'll pray that, Father, you take over. And, Lord, you minister to everyone in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Last week we studied about the rebuilding the temple and the enemy's opposition. In the study we saw how the enemies of the people of God rose up against the rebuilding of the temple of God after their return. We saw they had opposition. Why? Number one, they were jealous. They were jealous about the people of God returning back to their land. Maybe people are jealous about you because you are giving your life to the Lord and you are making progress. Don't worry, the Lord will cover you in Jesus' name. Number two, they wanted to frustrate the re-establishment of true worship in Israel. And they cannot do that. And they could not do that in your life. Every frustration of the enemy will be cancelled in your life in Jesus' name. Number three, it is a tradition. You need to understand that. You need to know that it is a tradition for the devil to fight the cause of God and the gospel, whether you like it or not. But you need to cheer up. However, they slowed down the work of God in the rebuilding of the temple, but could not stop it permanently. Why? Because God was on their side and God will always continue to be on our side and I believe God that whatever you might be going through believe the Lord, the Lord is on your side. In Psalm 62 in verse 11 God has spoken once, twice have I had this the what? the what? the what? The power belonged unto God. I pray that power will come upon your life. Today we are going to the searching the scripture of today. Completion and dedication of the temple. The memory verse. You open the Bible so that we can read together. Why we expect a very fast reader from the choir, a brother or a sister, so that you can read to us. The memory verse is taken from Ezra chapter 6 in verse 14. Are you there? Are you there? Can we open it together and read together Ezra? Chapter 6 in verse 14. One to go.
Thank you. It's like I couldn't hear. I wanted to hear. Let's read it together. One, two, go. And the elders of the Jews build it and they prosper through the prophet sign of Agai, the prophet, and Zechariah, the son of Ido. And they build it and finish it according to the commandment of the God of Israel, according to the commandment of Cyrus, and Darius, and Artaxerxes, king of Persia. Thank you very much. Uh, any reader from uh, um, the choir? We're going to read verses 1 to 3. Verses 1 to 3 of chapter 6. 6 to 8, and then 13 to 18. From 1 to 3, I'll guide you. Verse 1. Then Darius the king made a decree, and such was made in the house of the rules, where the treasures were laid up in Babylon. And I was found at Akmitha in the palace that is in the province of the Medes, a rule, and therein was a record thus written. In the first year of Cyrus the king, the same Cyrus the king made a decree concerning the house of God at Jerusalem. Let the house be builded, the place where they offer sacrifices, and let the foundations thereof be strongly laid. The height thereof, three score cubits, and the breadth thereof, three score cubits. Thank you. Verse 6, Verse six to 8. Eight. Now, therefore, time and governor beyond the river, Shita Boz, Danai, and your companions, the Aprasa sites which are beyond the river, be far from thence. Let the work of the house of God alone, let the governor of the Jews and the elders of the Jews build this house of God in his place. Moreover, I make a decree. What he shall do to the elders of these Jews for the building of this house of God, that of the king's goods, even of the tribute beyond the river, forthwith expenses be given unto this man, that they be not hindered. 13 to 18. From verse 13. Then Tatnai, governor on this side of the river, Shetabosnai and the companions, according to that which they the king has sent, so they did speedily. And the elders of the Jews built it, and they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet, and Zechariah the son of Edo, and they built it and finished it, according to the commandments of God of Israel, and according to the commandments of Cyrus, and Darius, and Atasazas, king of Persia. And this house was finished on the third day of the month Eda, which was in the sixth year of the reign of Darius the king, and the children of Israel, the priest, and the Levites and the rest of the children of the captivity kept the dedication of this house of God with joy. And offered the dedication of the house of God and 100 bullocks, 200 rams, 400 lambs, and for the sin offering for all Israel, 12 he goats according to the number of the tribes of Israel. And they said the priests in the divisions and the Levites in the courses for the service of God, which is at Jerusalem, as it is written in the book of Moses. Thank you, brother. King Cyrus of Persia initiated the return of the Jews' exile from Babylon to Jerusalem. He was there by the Spirit of God for this action. You know, they have been in Babylon for 70 years. And then the Lord has to perform the prophecy that had been made earlier. And eventually, this king of Babylon, Cyrus, was stirred up by the Spirit of the Lord. Why? God can use anyone to fulfill his purpose, whether in your life, whether in my life, whether in the nation, whether in the church of the Lord. All you need to do as an individual and then as a believer, you have an open mind, you go and pray and leave the rest. Don't bother the method, the system. The Lord is going to use to meet your need. All you need to do is to believe the Lord. And as you believe the Lord, the Lord will do wonders in your life in Jesus' name. Zerubbabel led the team to commence the rebuilding assisted by Joshua, the priest. The work that began on a glorious note 
was soon stopped by the adversary of Judah with a letter to King Aceros. Let's see. In Ezra chapter 4, in verse 1. Ezra chapter 4, in verse 1. Now, when the adversary Then rose up Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, and Jeshua, the son of Jos Josada, and began to build the house of God, which is at Jerusalem. With them were the prophets of God helping them. The prophet of God will help you. You can see they rose up. Although the work has been stopped, but they said no, we cannot stop because God is on our side. Here we can see, although there was a challenge, but Deiros was used to save the situation. My brother, my sister, you need to understand that God is just sitting by you at any time, at any point. You find yourself. But the condition is you live the life of righteousness. You live the life of holiness. Three points we consider. Number one, the heroes decree to search royal records. The heroes made a decree or a signed bill. At that time, it was decreed. If it were today, it's possibly going to be a bill that had been passed to search for the decree or government gazette to confirm the rebuilding and the authorization of the temple by Cyrus chapter 5 of Ezra. Chapter 5 of Ezra in verse 17. Now, therefore, it seemed good to the king. Let there be such made in the king's treasure house, which is there at Babylon, whether it be so, that a decree was made of Cyrus, the king, to build this house of God at Jerusalem. And let the king send his pleasure to us concerning this matter. Yes. They were searching to find out. They were searching to get the truth. It's good to search. It's good to find out. But one thing we need to understand. God is on the throne. And is watching in chapter 6 in verse 1. Then Darius the king made a decree. And search was made. In the house of the road where the treasures were laid upon, were laid up in Babylon. You can see they went ahead to start to search. 
They eventually search and search what were they searching for. They approved project design drawings were found in Archmeta in a safe custody. We'll find that. This underscores proper documentation in the church, in your life, in your family, and on personal issues. Question. How important is record keeping and what records should individual families and the church keep across all five here? Any, any hands there? Any hands? Yes. The important is it throws more light to the hidden things and also to the information and references that we are looking for. Thank you very much. We we'll see that it saves us from embarrassment. And we need to understand if you have bought a land, please go ahead, perfect the title deeds. If you are running a business, make sure you register the business. Because if you don't do that, a law can come tomorrow and you might be in a difficult situation. As a church, we ensure whatever property we have, we must make sure we have all the titles or the deeds or whatever to be able to keep the cause of people like this. Deiros was, was, was thorough, unlike Aseros, that caused cessation. We can see Deiros, he decided, I need to search out, I need to find out. But Aseros, what did he do? He just went ahead. Because he was biased. Whoever is biased against your life, the Lord will take care of him. Amen. Point number two. Diligence in completing reconstruction of the temple. Ezra chapter 6. Ezra chapter 6 in verse 13. Then that night, governor of this side, the river, Shetabul Zadnea and their companion, according to that which they wrote, the king, and said, so did speedily. You can see, eventually they rose found out. He saw the authenticity of the document and that they were right in the safe of the government. And he sent out a bill or a decree and said, hastily. Go and perform this and make sure that they continue building the house of the Lord. First Samuel, First Samuel chapter 21, in verse 8. And David said unto Ahimelech, and is there not here under thy hand, spear, or sword? For I have neither bought brought my sword, nor my weapons with me. Because, are you there? Because the king's business required what? Require what? The work of the Lord required his. You are a leader in any area. Make sure whatever you are asked to do, go ahead and do it very quickly because the Lord is watching you. The governor and all the subjects of the king acted promptly without delay on his instruction for rebuilding the temple. Our guests and our convert during this retreat must, must, must be visited within 24 hours after living here. My guess, GS guess, you are all here. We appreciate you for coming. And we are saying that within the next 24 hours you live here, we will knock at your door. Church, 
Am I speaking your mind? Am I speaking your mind? Yes, you can hear. The church has said within the next 24 hours, they are going to knock at your gate. And I believe it will be so in Jesus' name. In the sixth year of the eros, they accomplished this within about four, four years with the help of Agar, the prophet, and Zechariah, including the builders. Unity is required to build God's sanctuary between the pastors, the leaders, the workers, and everybody. It is instructive here to say that any abandoned church project must be revisited because building projects in the church is part of church growth. And evangelism. See Bagada now. Everybody wants to come there. Yes, the word of God is there. But then looking at the structure, they say, Wow, I need to go there. I need to see what's what's happening there. Because the building itself is an attraction. And we are told physical development is part of church growth. And I pray by the grace of God. We will do everything possible in our district, in our group, to have a fitting structure to the glory of God in Jesus' name. I didn't hear your amen. amen. Point number three, dedication of reconstructed temple. The climax of any project is at the time of dedication. Let's see it. Ezra chapter 6 in verse 16 and the children of Israel the priests and the Levites and the rest of the children of the captivity kept the dedication of this house of God which what? which what? which what? they are telling us that you know it's a joyful thing to come to the house of the Lord and they were happy because the true worship had already begun and these other adversaries they wanted to stop there the church of God is unstoppable did you hear me I said the church of God is unstoppable and in your life the devil cannot stop you and our pastor and the Jesus and our Father in the Lord had already declared. Did you catch it? I'm asking you, did you catch it? I caught it and I'm going and I know all the challenges of financial problems in our church, in our church, in our church, they are gone forever. I said they are gone forever. And so, we can see clearly the word of God is selling on. They were happy in verse 19. And the children of the captivity kept the Passover upon the 14th day of the first month. You can see the joy, the happiness. They were happy that the house of God was dedicated once again. However, this temple cannot at that time be compared with the Nisha, Solomon's temple. Yes, and that's what we saw. But we need to understand this. Notwithstanding, the splendor of a religious building does not equate to spirituality. Doesn't matter how magnificent, how splendor the building is. If the word of God is not there, if the fear of God is not there, if the assimilation of the word of God is not there, it's as good as nothing. It takes obedience to the word of God in the temple and living holy life and precept of the word of God. The Jews celebrated the Passover like our Lord's Supper at this time. And let me ask you, church, and let me ask you, 
And let me ask you, we have been having a Lord's Supper in our various groups. The question is, have you been partaking at the Lord's Supper? Many of us, when it's time we are going to have the Lord's Supper, what do we do? We decide to stay away from the service. And because of that, you discover the attendance will drop. Even the attendance that drop, those who partake will further drop. The question is, with all the labor, with all the pain, with all that the man of God is doing, what are you doing? Are you not prepared for heaven? Are you not ready for heaven? Are you not looking ahead that a day is coming, I'm going to reign with the Lord? You need to think about it. And if you are here, and you are a member, and you are a Christian, a member of Deep Alive Bible Church, and you are not taking the Lord's Supper, something is wrong somewhere. And something is wrong in your life. But thank God, we have had quite a message last night. And I want you to think about that. That from now on, your life will be clean. Your life will be straight. Your life will be ready for the coming of the Lord in Jesus' name. Let's rise up so that we can pray together. Why not talk to the Lord and say, Lord, yes, am I living right? We have seen the temple. Eventually, those enemies, those adversaries that have been standing on the way, the Lord took them away. Your enemies, your challenges, challengers, the Lord will take care of them. In fact, he has taken care of them already. And you are going home with a miracle in your life. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Father, we appreciate you for your glory. We saw the temple. The enemy came. He wanted to fight the work of God. And they sometimes want to fight the preaching of the gospel. But we thank you. As we go through records, we we'll discover they have never won. And they will never win in Jesus' name. As we continue, we we'll pray you continue with us in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. Shall be rising up as we sing together from the program sheet in our hands. We'll be, read, we'll be singing together from page three. Christ Jesus had the power, the power to forgive, the power to quicken whom he will and make the sinner live. Christ Jesus had a power, who tell it far and near, who bring to him your guilty heart, and grace shall banish fear. Christ Jesus had a power, the power to renew, the power to cleanse your heart from sin, and make you holy true. Christ Jesus had a power, forevermore to keep, who none can pluck you from his hand, or rob him of his chip. Christ Jesus had a power, the power to console, the power to carry all your care, on him your body's roll. Christ Jesus had a power to wipe the tear away. Who place in him your confidence. Who trust him and obey. Christ Jesus had a power, the power to destroy and, bru and power to bruise your enemy. Who your soul and all. Christ Jesus had a power when your dying bed to give your soul the victory, the power to raise the dead. Christ Jesus had a power the power of God, he wills. Christ Jesus had the power. My heart surrender ye. Christ Jesus had the power. I trust him evermore. Christ Jesus had the power. I worship 
and adore.
minutes starting as we uh, begin to pray unto the Lord, the Bible says in Psalm 60, 60 in verse 12, Through God we shall do valiantly, for he is he that shall tread down our enemy. The Lord has spoken to us wonderfully at this year Easter retreat. Every enemy of our soul, the Lord will tread them down. And we will go out valiantly, we go out victoriously in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord that after receiving so much from this place, all the enemy of your soul, sin, Satan, and circumstances, the Lord will give you victory over them all. Open your mouth and pray unto the Lord. Victory after this retreat, no more defeat, no more failure. And the Lord will give us total and complete victory in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth, pray unto the Lord. Pray unto the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Upon the fourth day of the week, the Bible says we should give, we should put in stock. Upon the fourth day of the week, let every one of you lay by himself, lay by him in store as God has prospered him, that there be no more gatherings when I come. It's now time for us to give our tithe and offering unto the Lord. Wherever you are, just raise up your tithe and offering unto the Lord as we pray from here. Put, put your hand in your pocket and your wallet and raise it up as we pray. Almighty God, we are grateful because you are the giver of life, the giver of everything. Out of the abundance you are giving unto us this morning, we want to give unto you. Lord, we pray you will receive it from us in Jesus' name. And whatever we are given this morning, will be used for the propagation of the gospel here on earth in Jesus' name. And in multiple, you will bless all the givers. And those who do not have now, we pray that when there is opportunity, they will give willingly, cheerfully, and generously in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. You can open your eyes and drop your tithe and offering as our leaders are passing the bags around. Make sure you drop your tithe and offering. We're still going to pray unto the Lord this morning. We, God has blessed us during this Easter retreat wonderfully. And I pray that the blessing we receive from God will be permanent in our lives in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and pray unto the Lord that everything you have received this time around will be permanent. Nothing will take the blessing of God away from your hand. Open your mouth and pray that everything we have received this time will be permanent. Salvation, sanctification, deliverance, whatever you have received at this time, it will be permanent in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Pray for yourself that what you have received at this year is that retreat will be permanent. Nothing will take it away from your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. In Ezra chapter 6, in verse 1, Then they wrote the king made the decree, and such was made in the house of Rose, where the treasures were laid up in Babylon. We are going to pray that after this retreat, a book of remembrance will be opened concerning you. Open your mouth and pray unto the Lord. A book of remembrance, something you never even pray for. The Lord will begin to do for us. Our Father and the Lord said so during this Easter retreat. That even what you don't pray for, God will begin to answer your prayer because of the power of resurrection. Open your mouth, pray. Talk to the Lord that the Lord will open a book of remembrance concerning you. Pray unto the Lord, a book of remembrance. The Lord will open concerning everyone after this retreat, breakthrough, deliverance, and God will do for everyone. In Jesus' name we pray. We're going to pray for Deeper Life Bible Church. The Lord has blessed us. And from this place, our Father and the Lord have ministered to millions of people. The message, messages were transmitted. And all the Deeper Life Bible Church worshipers in Nigeria, Africa, and beyond, they pray, let's call upon the name of the Lord that the blessing will be permanent. In Jesus' name, we pray. In Proverbs chapter 11, in verse 25, the Bible says, The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that water it shall be water also himself. We want to pray for our Father and the Lord, our general superintendent, 
He has given unto us liberally every time we come. We want to pray thousands of that the Lord will multiply in his life in Jesus' name. Let's open our mouth and pray unto the Lord. The Lord will continue to feed him. The Lord will give him more and more so that we receive more and more from, from his ministry and from his messages every time we come. Let's pray the Lord will continue to renew his strength. The Lord will give him physical and spiritual strength all the time. Pray. See the way you are praying. You are the, you are the giver of everything. We pray, O oh Lord, as we also keep praying this morning, greater things you still do for us in Jesus' name. We are going to pray. We want to call upon the name of the Lord. There are many things God has done in our life during this year Easter retreat. God has touched your life. He has taken something away from you. Those things will never come back again in Jesus' name. The Lord saw that man after he had seen him. He told him, go and sin no more. The power of sin will not conquer any one of us anymore in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and pray unto the Lord. The power of sin will not conquer you. Everywhere we go, we are going to be victorious over sin, over Satan, over everything that want to paralyze our Christian life. The one, the, our Father and the Lord want to be hearing testimony about us everywhere that God is doing wonders in our life. Pray, you will not be defeated any longer. Every defeat, every failure, the Lord will take it away from every member of this church. All those who have heard the word of God all over, the word of power, the word of resurrection, that the power will be working in every life of every individual. Pray. Let's open our mouth in the headquarters of the Palais Bible Church worldwide. And we need to pray and send the power of God to all the churches all over. That all our members that are gathered together in every location this morning, and the final message will be coming from the, from the pastor, from our Father and the Lord, the power to conquer, the power to win. The Lord will give unto every member of our church all over. Let's open our mouth and pray. As God is giving up with all our mind, with all our strength, every day of our lives in Jesus' name. As we continue this morning, Holy Father, we pray. Open heaven unto everyone. And Lord, none of us will live here without a thought from heaven in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. Bible study will be transmitted to all of us in our various district and location tomorrow. And I believe that as we listen to the word of God there, we'll be stronger and stronger and stronger in Jesus' name. Sundays are days of worship in the Palai Bible Church. And uh, as we are gathered together here today, we'll be gathering together in our various district next Sunday for Sunday worship service. And uh, the service starts generally by 8 o'clock in the morning. I was the time of searching the scripture. And after that, we listen to the word of God. And I believe that as we join other members of the church in various districts and locations next Sunday, God will bless us abundantly in Jesus' name. Thursdays are days of revival and evangelism training service. It's a time we come with our prayer requests. It's a time we pray together. It's a time also we listen to the word of God and we are trained on how to bring other people onto the church and onto Christ. Next Thursday is another chance. Come. And the Lord will bless you. He will bless your families in Jesus' name. Thank you and God bless you.
came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him, at the draught of the fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. And it came to pass, when he was in a certain city, behold, a man full of leprosy, who, seeing Jesus, fell on his face and besought him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And he put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy departed from him. And he charged him to tell no man, but go and show thyself to the priest, and offer for thy cleansing, according as Moses commanded, for a testimony unto them. But so much the more went there a fame abroad of him, and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. And he withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed. And it came to pass on a certain day, as he was teaching, that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. And behold, men brought in a bed a man which was taken with the palsy, and they sought means to bring him in and to lay him before him. And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went upon the housetop and let him down through the tiling with his couch into the midst before Jesus. And when he saw their faith, he said unto him, Man, thy sins are forgiven thee. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this which speaketh blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answering said unto them, What reason ye in your hearts? Whether is easier, to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Rise up and walk? But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power upon earth to forgive sins, he said unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, and take up thy couch, and go into thine house. And immediately he rose up before them, and took up that whereon he lay, and departed to his own house, glorifying God. And they were all amazed, and they glorified God, and were filled with fear, saying, We have seen strange things today. And after these things he went forth and saw a publican named Levi sitting at the receipt of custom. And he said unto him, Follow me. And he left all, rose up, and followed him. And Levi made him a great feast in his own house. And there was a great company of publicans and of others that sat down with them. But their scribes and Pharisees murmured against his disciples, saying, Why do ye eat and drink with publicans and sinners? And Jesus answering said unto them, they that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And they said unto him, Why do the disciples of John fast often and make prayers, and likewise the disciples of the Pharisees, but thine eat and drink? And he said unto them, Can ye make the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them and then shall they fast in those days. And he spake also a parable unto them. No man putteth a piece of a new garment upon an old. If otherwise, then both the new maketh a rent, and the piece that was taken out of the new agreeeth not with the old. And no man putteth new wine into old bottles, else the new wine will burst the bottles and be spilled, and the bottles shall perish. But new wine must be put into new bottles, and both are preserved. No man also, having drunk old wine, straightway desireth new, for he saith, The old is better. May God help us to be doers of the word. Amen.
in particular I will thank the Lord for all the ministers all the workers and those who are behind the screen we cannot see them and everyone who has made this retreat a success in your life in my life and not only for Lagos but all over but thanking God for you I will pray that the blessings of the Lord will abide and reach your life in Jesus' name. Amen. You might not have had the chance to listen very well because you are very busy and the Lord understands. And the little you have heard or the much you have heard, the Lord will make it to work resurrection perfection in your life. 
and those of us who are members and your participants at the retreat when you go back home spend some time even a few minutes and pray for all our workers over here at the headquarters and everywhere those who have made the retreat a success pray for them if thousands of people will pray for them their lives will be better the ministries will be better and everything we have received they will also receive in jesus name we mustn't forget those who have worked in the kitchen and uh, you know they are facing the heat of the kitchen every time but they are provided for us at a great expense and we're praying that the lord will bless them in jesus name those who took care of our children in the children church those who took care of our youths and those victorious youths and those who took care in the campus section and over here in the adult section ushers security singers members of the choir everyone the lord will bless you this year will be the best you ever experience in your life and for our guests my guests and the newcomers we we'll praise the Lord for you. We we'll pray that what the Lord has done in your life will be permanent in Jesus' name. I'm, exp I'm extending invitation to you that as you have participated with us over here at the DC, at the DLCC, that's Deeper Life Conference Center, you come to Bagada. Bagada is an experience. I want to see you there. And I pray the Lord will bless you more and more in Jesus' name. Are you still with me? I can't hear my people. Our leaders all over the world met recently. They came over here and they went around this uh, complex. They went everywhere. And then they came back to have a meeting together. And they said, all of us will want to raise this Deeper Life Conference Center to an international standard. And we are planning, we are planning for hundreds of thousands, even more than those who are here, and that everyone will have at least a three-star hotel accommodation. And you will not be on the side of the road or there or there. You have not seen anything at the DLCC here. And they said, we have a DLCC or we're going to have a DLCC of God's own vision. And we make that our own vision and it becomes something international. There's one prayer I'm praying for you. Are you ready? I said there is one prayer I am praying for you. Are you ready? You will not die before that time. Your eyes have seen the beginning of the LCC. You will remain alive. Every sickness, every disease, every infirmity that will knock at your door. Before this DLCC is completed, I command, come out in Jesus' name. You have seen a DLCC when it was, you know, just like this. You will see something. Something international. Accommodation, all those tents there, they call it White House, they call it Green House, they call it a Beautiful House. We will push them aside. And within a short time, you are going to see something international. We we'll have accommodation for ministers, accommodation for our workers, 
accommodation for newcomers, accommodation for our guests, accommodation for international people. And it's going to be a great thing in Jesus' name. Ah, but now, where will the money come from? Are we going to go to the cement industry and say, Ipa Life is building DLCC, donate cement, donate iron, donate this and donate that. Where will the money come from? The money will come from you. Where are you? I say, where are you? If you don't have any job now, because of this DLCC, I proclaim in your life, job come in Jesus' name. For the sake of the Lord, and for the sake of this uh, edifice, your prosperity is hiding. The Lord will open the door. He will supply all our need in Jesus' name. We're not talking of looking for millions. We're talking of billions. But that billion will come. I said it will come. In our districts, in our groups, our leaders will be talking to us. And you will even beyond what you have now, you are going to give in Jesus. And everyone, we are going to be part of this in Jesus' name. Why don't you just raise your voice to the Lord on this particular issue? I'll be part of this. I'll be part of this. I'll be part of this. Are you? And then, not only that you are going to have a deal, a deal, a, a deeper life, a Christian center of international standard, God will give you mansions in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you. You have called us to a glorious time. I will pray, Lord, none of us will miss our chance in Jesus' name. We are part of this army of God moving on to glory land. I will pray nothing will cancel our place in your kingdom. Inject us with your power. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God has blessed you already. You can sit down. I'm coming to Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering be made conformable unto his death. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Romans chapter 8, verse 37. Romans 8, verse 37. It says, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors. Through him that loved us. In all the things in your life, all the challenges of your life, you'll be more than a conqueror in Jesus' name. Revelation chapter 12, I read from verse 11. Revelation chapter 12, reading from verse 11. And they overcame him, and they overcame him, and they conquered him by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives until the death. Victory over Satan. Those three folds uniting together the enemies of your soul, sin, self, and Satan, you have the victory. Over corruption, over compromise, 
over carnality, you are going to have victory. Over the fear of man to go through, you will be more than a conqueror. That's why we're looking at the message, winning through his resurrection power. Winning through his resurrection power. Every crossroad, you will win. Every turn of the way, you will win. Every challenge of your life, the church, all the way through. Three things we're looking at. Number one, counting as legal gain as loss to win Christ. Counting as gain as loss to win Christ. Number two, contending earnestly by grace and love to win our companions. Contending earnestly by grace and love to win our companions. Number three, conquering entrenched wickedness, godlessness in the land. Conquering entrenched godlessness in the land to win the crown. You will wear a crown. You will win the crown. And all the reward God has for you in eternity you will not miss any of them in Jesus' name. Victory. Winning. Success. Conquering. How will that happen? Number one, counting as gain as loss. The win of Christ. In Philippians chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 7. Philippians chapter 3. Verse 7, but what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Think about your life now and think about the gains, temporary gain of sin, temporary gain in the world, temporary gain as you have been living like other people. But Paul the Apostle said, what things were gained to me in the Jewish religion. What things were gained to me in the Jewish tradition? What things were gained to me among the authorities of the Sanhedrin? Now I counted that for loss because of Christ. It says, Yea, doubtless. And I count all things but loss. Yea, doubtless. I count all things but loss. That means all the things I would have gained with his calling into the gospel, into the kingdom. He said, I suffered loss of all things, and do count them or dog that I may win Christ. Anything that contradicts your relationship with Christ, you lose them, you give them up because you want to retain Christ and you want to hold on to Christ all the days of your daughter. He counted that gain as loss. If he had remained as Pharaoh's daughter, he would have been a, an emperor, a king over Egypt. But he said, no, not just Egypt. He left that, and the he could have gained. He could have held on to, he counted them for loss, and the Lord is challenging you today. He's putting a Paul and putting Moses before you and before me. And he's saying, look at what they gave up. What are you giving up? So that grace of Christ, the power of Christ, and your connection with Christ, anything that will take that away from you, you will count the gain, as the gain, as loss, to retain your place and your position in Christ, in Jesus' name. Look at Ruth chapter 1. Ruth, Ruth chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 10. Ruth chapter 1 verse 10. And he said unto her, Surely we will return with thee unto thy people. And Naomi said, Turn again, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Are there yet any more sons in my womb 
that they may be your husbands. Turn again, my daughters, go your way. For I am too old to have an husband. If I should say, I have hope. In verse 14, and they lifted up their voice and wept again and up and kissed her mother-in-law and went back of the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at it in verse 15 now. And she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people and unto her gods. Return thou. This is the place through which you will go to heaven. This is the place through which your family will go to heaven. It says, Whither thou goest, I will go. And where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God together. We're staying together. We're believing together. Nothing will drive you back in Jesus' name. Number one, counting as gain as loss to win Christ. Number two, contending earnestly by grace to stand for the faith. And to stand by the faith, earnestly contending, earnestly presenting the word of God, passionately conveying the truth of grace and the truth of love unto the people around you. You will win your companions in Jesus. Earnestly contend, contend earnestly, earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. The contention here does not mean that you are fighting. The contention here does not mean that you are arguing with anybody. You are living the life, the life of Christ, the life of the Christian that can come. What's going to be the result? The first thing, your companion, your husband, or your wife will be converted. This salvation is for you and for your whole house. And your house will not be left out of their salvation in Jesus' name. Look at 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 1. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your husbands, that if they eke his opposition of the gospel, and you are, you are contending for the faith that way, you are contending quietly. You are contending with meekness. You are contending with love. And your life will conquer everything they might have had against you in the past. And one day they will say, I want to go with you to that church. And when they come, the Lord will win them over in Jesus' name. It means in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat. When you go out and you take a stand, when you go out and say, I will not compromise, when you go out and you say, everything I've heard, everything I've learned, I'm going to live by them, and the grace of God is evident in your life. It says, I'm not going to defile myself with the portion of the king's meat, anything sacrificed to idol, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not some of them are low some of them are very close some of them might be watching you at a distance but you'll win them over i said you'll win them over but it's going to take earnestly contending for that faith for that belief and for that conviction daniel chapter 3 verse 15 now if you be ready at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, sabtry, dulcima, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made well. But if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fairy furnace, and who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? That's battle. 
That's, that means that Nebuchadnezzar himself said the battle line. And he said, you must worship my idol. But you remember how you are going to conquer them. How you are going to convince them. How you are going to change their mind. It is by earnestly contending. Not fighting. Not arguing. But just taking your stand. And you are firm. And you are standing solid. As the rock of Gibraltar. As they say. And you stand your ground. I will not sin. Somebody there. I will not sin. I will not worship idol. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able. Our God whom we serve is able. Is your God able? That resurrection power in your soul, in your spirit now, is that able? Christ, the Savior, the conqueror, the one that overcame, is he able to support you? He will, he will, and God is able to deliver us from the go through waters, you'll not be drowned. And then, verse 28, then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shit. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they won him over. You will win your enemies over. Those who are contending with the gospel, scoffers and scorners, you will win them over in Jesus' name. He was asking, that's Nebuchadnezzar, who is that God that will deliver you out of my hand? Now he said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him. Trusted in him. You want to worship my idol? Trusted in him. And yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any other God except their own God. Therefore, the man is won over. Therefore, I make a decree. That every people, nation, language, we each speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be caught in pieces. The man has been won over. Your enemies will be won over. I promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. He will promote you. They will lift you up. But it is not by compromising. It is by standing your ground. Honestly contending by grace and by love. As we conquering entrenched godlessness in the land to win the crown. Conquering entrenched godlessness in the land to win the crown. First Corinthians chapter 9. First Corinthians chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 24. Do ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run that he may obtain, so run that he may win, I will win. I will overcome. I will conquer. Look at verse 25. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things, self denying in all things. Now he do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we are an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly. So fight I, not as one that beateth the air, is not, and bring it into subjection, lest by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a cast away. No, you will not be a cast away. The Lord will give you the victory. But how? 
Look at verse 21 of If that evil and corruption in society, if it conquers you, it's not just the corruption, it's the father of corruption, it's the father of lies, it's Satan, the God of the world that has conquered you. Satan will not conquer me. Satan will not conquer you. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Overcomer you are. Any overcomer there, you'll overcome in Jesus' name. In First John chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 4. First John chapter 5, reading from verse 4. And whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Whatsoever is born of God, a little child, a young person, an, an adult, a married man, a married woman, somebody who is walking in the most corrupt place in the land, if you are born of God, whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this, the victory that overcometh the world, is seen as not. He'll try to present to you, they go and bring a one, a lady, beautiful outside, but ugly inside. He'll bring that lady to you, marry this one. Whosoever is born of God, sinneth not, you will not sin. Revelation chapter 21. I'm reading from verse 7. Revelation chapter 21. Reading from verse 7, He that overcometh shall inherit all things. All those blessings are waiting for you. All those benedictions are waiting for you. And the reward of the conqueror is waiting for you. Company of overcomers. I stand side by side with the saints of old that were overcomers. They overcame by the blood of the Lamb. You overcame but like Elisha. Those who have gone before us like Samuel. Those who have gone before us like Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Those who have gone before us like Peter, like Paul, like John. They stood firm to the very end. They did not fail. Whatever temptation, whatever trial, whatever difficulty, whatever challenge comes your way. As you are going out, you are going with resurrection power. You count as gain as loss. You contend earnestly by grace and love. And you conquer entrenched wickedness. After hearing this kind of message, you are going to talk to the Lord. We have seen examples in the scriptures of those who actually overcame despite the challenges is their mind. They decided. They took a decision. And you are going to take that decision this morning. I, you are not going to fail. You are not going to fail. You are not going to be defeated. Your enemies will not bring you on the ground. Sin will not conquer you. Self will not conquer you. Satan will not conquer you. It's a decision. It's a consecration. And at this last moment, you are making up your mind. You are calling on the Lord. I want to be like Moses. I want to be like Elijah. I want to be like Elisha. I want to be like Ruth. I want to be like Daniel. I want to be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We want to know those who want to follow the full steps of these worthies of faith, heroes of faith. The Lord is looking up to you this moment because you are his battle axe on this face of the earth. And he wants to put power, the resurrection power, 
into your life. Into your life. There are not going to be any challenge anywhere. No crossroad that will stop you. No opposition that will stop you. It is a decision you have made. Whatever be the gains of corruption in the past, this moment, you are making up your mind to drop them. Any gain of corruption, like Moses, eventually decided to suffer with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin. In Egypt, this day, you and I were taking a decision that we are not going to enjoy the corruption in the world, the morality in the world, the evil in the world. You are going to stand in righteousness. You are going to stand in holiness. You are going to stand for purity. You are not going to be involved in idol worship. It's a decision you are making up at this moment. You are going to be another route that will not go to the idol, the apostle. He abandoned the tradition of the Jews, the worship of the Jewish people. And he said, one thing that is more important, the spirit of Christ. That is, should be a prayer this day. In this resurrection power retreat, you need to win the power of Christ this morning. And it has to come by prayer. Push aside the worldly gains. Push aside the worldly desires. And then make up your mind to follow Christ. And then you are going to contend. You are going to contend honestly. This world is a battlefield. And you must fight. The fight of faith. We are not wrestling with flesh and blood. Against the flesh. Take up the armor. And fight. Against self-will self-ambition things that would damn your soul at the end of life make up your mind and relations they will be saved through you through me make up your mind this day commit yourself into god's hand and let god lay his hands on you lay his hands on me through love, show out the love of Christ. Demonstrate the love of Christ to win all the neighbors, all your companions. No compromise. No compromise in your life. As you are leaving this retreat, you are leaving an overcomer. No compromise. No yielding to any temptation. No rising and falling. You are going to be a stable Christian. You are going to be made up his mind. He will not defy himself with the wine that the kings drank. And you are making up your mind this hour. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they made up their minds. They said we will not worship the idols in Babylon. You are not going to worship the idols in our land. The corruption in the land. The evil in the land. The entrenched godlessness in the land. Never, never make up your mind. 
This is my decision this hour. This is my decision this hour. Pray and have the victory before you leave here. Don't go home without the assurance of victory. He that dwelleth in you is greater than he that is in the world. The power of Christ, the Spirit of God, the power of holiness, have it at this moment of time. You are an overcomer. You will overcome. And you are going to overcome by faith. Exercise your faith. And then move out and do something for the glory of God. Move out and proclaim the gospel of our Lord Jesus. The city. You are going to conquer in the village. You are going to conquer in the community where you live. In the marketplace, you are going to conquer. There will be no power that will stand against you to defeat you. No power will overcome you. No power will bring you down. You are an overcomer, my brother. You are an overcomer, my sister. And the power of God is backing you up. The Spirit of God is backing you up. The presence of God will go with you. And all the powers of darkness will submit. All the forces of darkness will submit. All the powers of the enemy, they will submit at your feet. The Lord will bruise your enemies under your feet. After this retreat, you are going to be another man. You are going to be another woman. It's going to be done. It will be accomplished. In Jesus' name we pray. Overcomers, I want to hear your amen. In Jesus' round up. You are going to tell the Lord, Lord, by your grace, I'm not going to yield to the corruption in the world. Open your mouth and tell the, and tell the Lord. By your grace, I am not going to yield in the entrenched godlessness in the land. It's my decision. It's my consecration. Amen. Amen. Our dear Father, we just thank you because of this wonderful retreat. Thank you for the power of resurrection of Christ you have deposited in our lives. Since we came here last Thursday, it has been from one level of victory to another level of victory, from one level of glory to another level of glory, from one level of faith to another level of faith. And at this moment of time, you are crowning everything. I pray that you receive thanks for all you have done for us. And Lord, we are making up our minds. We are taking decisions like the heroes of faith in olden times. Like Moses, like Elijah, like Elisha, like Daniel, like Ruth, like all the worthies of old that as they stood, we will stand. Nobody will defeat us. The corruption in the land will not defeat us. They cannot overwhelm our lives in Jesus' name. The courage to stand. The commitment to stand. The power to stand. Grant unto every one of us. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
as we move out here, we will move out as conquerors. And we are going to contend against corruption. We are going to contend against sin. We are going to contend against Satan and his cohorts. And we will win the battle. We will win the battle. In the name of Jesus Christ. Victory will be ours. Lord, confirm it in Jesus' name. Our lives will be a magnet to attract our companions. Our lifestyle will be a challenge to our friends. And through our lives, multitudes will flow into the kingdom. Lord, let it be so in Jesus' name. And dear Father, whatever your people had prayed here this day, and prayed throughout this retreat, as they step out here, those blessings will follow us. They will overtake us. We will prosper. According to the prayer of the man of God in Jesus' name, nothing will fail in our lives. We are more than conquerors through him that loves us. Let it be so in Jesus' name. For your servants you have used more anointing, more action, more power, more strength will flow into his life. Greater things will happen. Demons that want to stand on our road, Lord, we clear them off. In the name of Jesus Christ. And we will go in peace and enjoy our blessings. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Go in this thy might. The Lord will bless you.